Hello, this is Rodney Dowd here at Science of Groups, and I'm here to talk to you about a problem that shows up in a lot of meetings, which is there are always some quiet people who don't speak up very much, and a lot of times they get over, um, you know, overridden by people who talk more. Those people are dominating the meeting, and they say 90 or 89, 80 or 90 percent of everything that's said is said by the more dominant people, and the quiet ones you don't hear from them. Um, and when, whenever uh, people ask these dominant people, why do you speak up? They say things like, well, the quiet one, it's, it's dead in the meeting. Hardly anyone's talking, so I'm just going to talk. So a lot of times they're just trying to fill up the space with their thoughts and their ideas. And maybe they, you know, they just don't think the quiet people are ever going to talk. And um, this is a problem because quiet people have something to contribute that's usually different than the more talkative people. One of the things, uh, concepts in psychology is between a prevention focus and a promotion focus. And people who are more talkative and dominant have a promotion focus. They are focused on getting things done and focused on, on ideas and focused on new things and gaining things. And that's really useful because if you're trying to solve a problem, you definitely want that optimistic, uh, energetic focus. However, uh, some of the quiet people a lot of times have what it's called a prevention focus. And those folks, they uh, are seeing, can see problems in ideas. They see things that other people are, are missing. Uh, they, they focus on prevention, on how do you avoid bad things from happening. And you really want those people involved uh, just because why are they there if they're not going to be involved, right? But also because they have some unique contributions to make that might get missed. And so sometimes poor decisions are made if those people aren't listened to. So Okay, so we know what the problem is, so how do we solve it? So there's a very simple technique, actually. It's called brain writing. It was developed by Leigh Thompson, who's a professor of management at Kellogg University. And it's a procedure that's been tested for a long time, and it's really awesome. So it involves just four steps. Um, basically, the first step, if, and you will need a stack of Post-its. All right, just imagine there's a stack of Post-its in my hand. All right, you need a stack of Post-its, and you're going to take them through the four steps. And here's the four steps. One, you're going to have people, each person gets a stack of post-its and for 10 minutes, they're going to write uh, their ideas, solution to the problem or ideas for the marketing campaign, whatever it is. And you're going to give them 10 minutes and they're going to only write one idea per post-it. So that's the first step. Step two is they're going to actually post them on some kind of wall or whiteboard or whatever it is you've got. And by the way, if you don't have post-its, you can use, you know, index cards and tape if you've got it. Uh, but obviously post-its are, e are the easiest. All right. So after all the ideas are posted, now in 10 minutes, it's amazing how many ideas you'll get compared to traditional brainstorming. But after the, all the ideas are posted, now people can vote. So people will put um, some kind of a mark on their cards. And I like to have people put their initials on it. And you can limit the number of things that they're allowed to vote on or you know, say, hey, gift, put your initials on 10 ideas that you really like. All right, or five ideas, whatever seems to make sense at the time. All right, so people are going to vote. Um, then now they've discussed. So you take those ideas, the ones that all got votes, ones that didn't get votes, just don't bother. You don't need to discuss them very much. But the ones that got votes, now you can discuss those ideas. And now there's an open uh, open discussion because everyone's warmed up now. Everyone's been they've been standing up and moving around and walking around and posting all these ideas. And there's a, usually a lot of enthusiasm and energy in the room. And so it's pretty amazing. So now they're going to discuss it. And now you actually have a discussion. And those people who are quiet, they got their, uh, they've already given their feedback in two different ways. They've, uh, you know, written down ideas and they voted on ideas. And now they're much more willing to discuss because they've had a chance to think. And that's the key thing that you need for the quiet people is they need a chance to think quietly before they are comfortable expressing an idea, they want to think it through, and now you've given them that chance. So now they can discuss. And it is amazing. You will see people who everyone said, that person never says anything, or they hardly say anything, and we have to like pull things out of them, and they're just up and they're moving. And they're they're now they're <laughs> warmed up and they're ready to go. Okay, so uh, let me just tell you, give you an example of the kind of results that people can get. Um, one group, uh, generated 218 ideas in 10 minutes, all right? And a typical group would only get around 10 to 15 ideas. And I know because I've run brainstorming sessions many times before uh, where people are just talking. And, you know, one only one person can talk and one person can write at a time. But now if you've got four or five, six people in a room, you've got six times the number of idea generation happening at once. So it, it fills up a wall with an amazing number of ideas. 
So that is it. That's the idea. That's how you are going to get quiet ones to speak more. That's how you're going to get the dominant ones to be less dominant in the meeting and better able to listen to the quiet ones because the quiet ones are now up and around and moving. So this is a real simple tip. If you have more questions about how to do this, or you're not sure how to do this in your group, or you just want to uh, find out more information, you can always go to scienceofgroups.com. And also you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, that's it. So have a wonderful day and make sure that you get your groups up and moving because that is the key to getting everyone involved.